All right, during my uh, couple had a couple videos on DTMF stuff. Um, I had these uh, DTMF uh, transmitters and DTMF receivers, or encoders, decoders, whatever we want to call it. And uh, I was very impressed with a particular IC on this one. And it was this little 8-pin guy here. It's a serial input DTMF generator. All you need is the chip and a crystal and you're ready to go. You can just talk to it serially and it outputs DTMF tones. And I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. So uh, I, I looked around to see if I could buy those chips and you can. And in fact, uh, I bought 10 of them for $1.88. So 18 cents each plus a dollar shipping. So a buck 88 plus a dollar. I got 10 little parts. <laughs> now this is how they came <laughs> in a little clear bag with, uh, you know, all bent up leads. No, I mean, the leads are okay. Little gull wing parts, they're okay. But they are tiny, so what do you do with these little tiny surface mount parts? Well, get yourself some adapter boards. I have a, I have a tray here with some adapter boards. You can get different adapter boards on, uh, on eBay and other places. Uh, let me show you a couple I have. Um, let's see, is that zoomed in all the way? Yeah. So here's a little adapter board to make your own SIP. Uh, you can put different value capacitors or resistors and, and uh, make a little SIP package. That, that's, those are valuable. Um, here I have uh, some little tiny boards for a particular type of package. I'm not even sure what kind of package that is. Oh, look on the back side. Ah, so this is a double, double, uh, double board. One type of package on this side and one type of package on this side. And I, and I think, get that out of there. I think this is exactly the one that I need, so I'll put, I'll put it over here. Let's see what else I got. Um, these are dirt cheap. I bought a bunch once. Uh, yeah, here's a little bit of SO16 on this side and a TSSOP on this side. Now that's pretty cool. And I just have some miscellaneous things. Oh, here's we go. Here's another one down here. Uh, this one is super tiny. This is like a SOT23. Uh, dash six, a six pin uh, SOT 23. That's pretty tiny. Uh, this is one that I made, my design. And here's one that just does SOT 23s. So yeah, you get all kinds of little adapter boards. And so we'll be using, uh, using this one. I only need two of them, so let me break this in half. Um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make two of them. So there we go. Uh, this should be able to use this over here. So let's pull two of these out. Keep everything on camera here. So here's one, there's two. All right, close up our bag, this would be easy to lose. Oh yeah, what's the part number of these things? Uh, shoot. Down darn part number now. They are uh, HT9200As. Um, and this should be the right. Yeah, this is, should be the right ones. So where's pin one here? Pin one is other. Oh, there we go. Pin one's marked there. So we will put them on. Put them on. Let's see. That goes over here to pin eight. So pin one. Oh yeah, these are these are laid out funny. You have to be really you have to be really worried about this. So, so even though the pin, um, I'm not on camera again, darn it. Um, so if you let me, let me start over. <laughs> so this is the uh, surface mount part, and then this is going to be the new dip part, right? And so here's pin one. It's a square hole, but if you look at the routing. Pin one routes over to this pin here. So this is pin one of the SOT part. This is pin one of the dip part. So you have to be really careful about how you put this on. So it goes on like that. So, so even though this is pin one, the dot is going to be over uh, closer to this pin. Uh, so just kind of be kind of be aware of that. And uh, yeah, let me find some solder paste and uh, get these going.
All right, here's my favorite solder paste, uh, Kessler EP256. And you've seen me do this a million times. I'm gonna do it under the microscope, put it into my oven and uh, we'll come back. All right, they uh, came out of the oven perfect. Uh, sometimes these boards are a little rough. I have a real fine file that I use to smooth out the parts. And I've separated the two. All right, so now I'm going to put the pins in. Now here's a trick. Um, in order to get the part on there nice and straight, I use a proto board to hold everything together while I do the soldering. So I'll just stick these on here. Oops. Put the little guy on top. And now when I solder it down, everything will be nice and straight. And uh, yeah, go from there. Let me uh, heat up the soldering iron. All right, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, got a little, quite a bit of flux on them, so I think I'll I think I'll take the flux off. Just using some some ethanol, make them look pretty. Why not? If I'm going to be staring at them, I want them to look pretty. All right. So the only thing I'm going to need for these parts is I'm going to need um, I'm going to need some three, three point, what is it? 3.58, two, six, I don't remember, five, five point three, I mean, 3.8, some 3.26, uh, I think it's 3.826. Um, let me look for some crystals of the right type. One would think I would have such a thing. There's some 11s. Those are common. Where are the threes? Uh, what are these? Tens. Oh, I must have a bunch of those. You would think, right? One would think. Hmm. Oh, you know, I think I organized my crystals in a second. Well, last time I was looking for crystals, I organized them and I put all eight megahertz crystals in this bag and this bag has anything between three and four megahertz, so we should be able to find it in here. Uh, yeah, 3.5795, is that the right? Here we go, three, no, that doesn't sound one right. Here's 3.6864, five point, so, oh geez, a whole bunch of different ones. Ah, I guess I need to find the right one, which is, I need a 3.579. Okay, I did. I saw one of those in here. There's right one right there. I'll grab that one. That one right there will work. Okay, glad, glad I was organized. All right, so I'm going to need a crystal. And I'm going to need a couple loading resistor uh, capacitors, uh, 20, 20 picofarads. I need two of those.
Now I remember I bought some crystals for Arduino projects. Here's my Arduino box. And in my Arduino box, I have a section over here that has crystals and the 22 picofarads that go with them. So I'm going to grab a couple of those. So there we go. Got two. I'm so organized today. I'm so happy. It's nice when you have a, a setup and you've spent the time to organize it. You know where things are. You can just grab them. You don't have to hunt for them. So uh, yes. That's good news. All right, so now I have a, uh, a crystal and I have two loading capacitors and uh, I think I'll put this on a board. Uh, I don't think I want to put this on a proto board. I'm going to actually solder this to a, uh, to a to an actual board. Do I want to have it big and fancy or small? Hmm. Hmm. Probably big and fancy. So I'm probably going to want an Arduino with a display and everything on it too. So I think I'll get a different proto board. Every once in a while, people will ask me about the proto boards that I have. These are ones that I've designed myself. And uh, if you go to my GitHub page, which is just GitHub slash um, I had the Gerber files for these, so you can have, have them made. I have one file for this digital board, which is all uh, 100 mil centers. And then I have the analog board that has the funny looking, uh, funny looking section on half of it. Um, so yeah, so if you want to make your own, the Gerber files are there, feel free contribute to my Patreon if you uh, feel inclined. Otherwise, I don't care. Go ahead and steal them. It's not stealing. I'm giving them away. Um, I have quite a few patrons now. Thank you, guys. All right. Not nearly enough, though. <laughs> All right. Um, let's hook these up. And I will find a Arduino to use too and a display. I have some right here. What if I just should use those? I have a whole bunch of these things, so might as well. So here's a uh, display. We'll use one of those. And let me uh, let me find an Arduino of suitable vintage. I do like these, uh, I do like these nanos. This one already has things on it, so we'll use that one. All right. I like that. I like that. So, do I put sockets on or do I be, do I be brave and just solder everything down, huh? Do I be brave and solder? Oh gosh, hmm. I think, hmm. I don't see actually, hmm. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this, all the stuff on sockets cause I don't think it's gonna be permanent. So I will put it on sockets. So let's do kind of a layout here. Let's see how we want it. So when I put these uh, nanos on, I always, I always orient them so that the, uh, programming cable will stick out to the side, right? And then maybe we can have the display down here, which would be nice. And then maybe the little oscillator we could put over here, or over here. Yeah, let's put them over here. What a happy little, happy little IC over here. Yeah, let's put him over there. We'll put some things around him. Yeah, we'll lay it out. We'll lay it out something like that. And uh, yeah, let me find some. Let me find some sockets. I'll need some strip sockets and a a 
eight pin dip. Alright, we will cut these to size. So you always sacrifice one pin. You figure out which one you're going to throw away. Oh, so we're going to throw away that one. And we will throw away that one there. All right, so now we can put that over here. We have our eight pin socket for that and our little leftover here we can use for our display. So perfect. All right, let me uh, start wiring this up and I'll come back. All right, there we go. So I have the uh, uh, I squared C hooked up to pins uh, A, A4, A5, which is, to, is uh, standard for the Arduino. And I have the clock and data going into A2 and A3. And I put the crystal on and 22, micro, uh, 22 picofarad uh, loading capacitors in there. I have the chip select uh, wired ground, so it's chip selected on all the time. And I think I have enough uh, that I can go ahead and start developing software on this thing. So yeah, I think I'll give it a try.